Safi's Concrete Slab Design Assistant allows you to quickly generate the design of a concrete slab while staying in control of every step of the design process. The Concrete Slab Design Assistant has been developed with the goal in mind to improve efficiency by providing new tools within Safi's applications. Its easy to use interface allows you to quickly create the design strips of your slab based on the building geometry. Hence, the design of the slab is quick and intuitive. Also, the reinforcement visualization and advanced analysis tools allows you to tackle with confidence both the analysis and the design of the concrete slab. Let's now take a look at a brief example to show the new functionalities of the Slab Design Assistant. To quickly create the model, let's start with the creation of a grid. First, we will define the grid plane as the XZ plane. Then, let's create five spans of 5,000 millimeters and three spans of 5,500 millimeters. And now, generate the grid. Once the grid is generated, we can place the joints on each intersection by using the group selection of the whole grid. These joints will represent the location of each column supporting the model. We will then create the supports by using the extrusion tool. First, select all the joints at each intersection and use the extrude command on a minus 3600 millimeters for the Y axis. Once completed, we will have all members representing the support of our slab. Also, let's quickly define the support attributes of our model by defining the bottom joint as movement restrained along all axes as well as a rotation restrained around the Y axes to ensure stability of the model. Now let's take a look and define the different sections used for the analysis of the slab. First, we will define the plate section used for the concrete slab elements. The plate elements are isotropic of 30 MPa concrete with a width of 180 millimeters. We will then create a non-standard section to define the columns of the model. The section will be made of 40 MPa concrete with a square section of 400 millimeters. We now have an overview of the column section. Finally, we will define a slab design group. This design group is used to define the design parameter for the automated design of the slab. By creating a new group, we can define the type, grade, and size of the reinforcement used for the automated design. For this example, we will be using 15M bars of 400 MPa steel from the Canadian Library. Additionally, we will define the cover to 20 millimeters and leave the minimal bar spacing within a layer to its default value. The other option in the bottom of this window is to address the development length with the automated design. These options will be presented in further detail later in this video. First, we will draw the main contour of the slab with a mesh contour perimeter by selecting the four corners of the grid contour. We will attribute the plate section previously defined to this mesh contour and define the plate size of 350 millimeters. From this window, we can place refinement elements to the mesh as well as accessing the slab design assistant for this mesh contour. Even though this next step is optional, it is strongly recommended to place refinement areas at every support location. This will help in obtaining precise results for the negative moment resistance at the support location. By placing refinement area 400 by 400 mm rectangle shape with a plate size of 200 mm at each support location, we will ensure to obtain precise results in the support area. We will also place an opening contour that will represent a stairwell in the middle of the slab. Once completed, we will have all the elements for the finite element mesh of our slab. We can now go ahead and generate the mesh. 
Once the mesh is generated, we can now use the Slab Design Assistant to create the design strip of the slab. In this interface, we have a planar view of the slab contour, the different detailed elements, as well as the slab opening. First, we need to place the column line of the slab. These are the guides for the column strips of our design. They can be created and adjusted manually with these buttons or generated automatically. The Generate Column Line tool will automatically connect continuous support in both directions. Since this model is fairly simple, the parameter of the generation doesn't need to be modified. Once generated, the column lines are visible for both the X and Y axes. We can then use the Automated Generation of Design Strips tool. For this generation, we can leave the width tolerance as well as the length tolerance to their default values. The support size can be adjusted to the size of our supports of 400 millimeters. The bending moment included within the area of each support will not be considered for the design. The plate group is by default the same one as the mesh contour. Finally, the design group can be individually attributed for both the column strips and the middle strips. In this example, both have the same group previously defined. We can now generate the design strips of our model. These two buttons toggle the visibility of the design strips in both directions. In order to have a better visibility of the finite elements of the slab, we will modify a few display parameters. First, we will hide the faces of the plate elements as well as increasing the size ratio of the plates to 100%. Also, we will decrease the size ratio of the joints and supports to 20%. This will allow us to have a much lighter display for the design strips of our slab model in the 3D interface. We can now go ahead and attribute the loads to the slab. First, we need to define the basic load. In this example, there will be a dead load and a live load. Then, in the load combination menu, we will use the load combination wizard to generate the different possible load cases for this model. In this case, we can expect the second load case, D plus L, to be the most important one. Let's now attribute the pressure load on the surface of the slab. First, use the group select command to select all the plate elements of the slab. Then, we will attribute a dead surface load of minus 5 kN per square meters and a live surface load of minus 2 kN per square meters. Once these loads are created, we can hide these loads in the load visibility menu. Finally, we will define the section properties for the supports of the slab. Select the support from the side view of the slab form, right to left. Then, place the section properties for these members. Once all of these steps are complete, we will be able to launch the analysis of the slab. By going into the analysis interface, we only have to select the concrete design as the design option for the analysis to enable the automated design of the slab reinforcement according to the design group defined previously. Let's first take a look at the display of the global results of this slab. The contour line allows us to see the bending moment on both directions. Here we can see the results for the x-axis and the z-axis. Also, we can look at the deflection for the different load cases, giving us a great overview of the deflection within the slab. In this example, deflection is fairly uniform across the different spans. We can also visualize the design moments for each design strip within our slab for both directions. The same is true for the design shear. It is also possible to observe the design and analysis of each design strip separately. In the first tab, 
we can see the general geometric parameters of the strips. In the slab tab, we can see the design group used as well as the other design parameters. In the lower part, we see all the supports that are located in the area of the strips. When the strips are automatically generated, this part will automatically be filled by the assisted generation. In this case, we can notice that the strip has four supports. The support information can be edited manually from this window if needed. Finally, you can notice this button on the top of the window. This button allows us to access the reinforcement addition and visualization. Here we have a 3D presentation of the longitudinal reinforcements as well as the support for the individual strip. In the bottom part, the tab shows the different reinforcement groups, their individual spacing, and the equivalent number of bars as well as their different attributes. Each group selected is highlighted in the 3D interface and vice versa. Each of the reinforcement groups are manually editable if needed, but a restart of the analysis is necessary for those changes to take effect. In the top right corner, a cross-section view of the strip is visible. Also, the 2D view button gives you a 2D printable display of the reinforcement disposition. Detailed analyses are also available for each of the individual design strips. In this interface, we can see the resistance envelope for both benign moment as well as shear. The area where supports are located are also shown in the envelope. Limit resistance states are also visible for both bending and shear. Keep in mind that the automated design doesn't take into account the area included inside a support zone. Hence, it is important to pay special attention to the support attributes specifically for the negative moment design close to the supports. Finally, it is also possible to observe the whole slab according to the different limit state of the slab as well as the different load combinations. It is the easiest way to see the potential design problems in the concrete slab design. Safi Slab Engineering is the solution to tackle any design involving reinforced concrete slabs. Visit our website at www.safi.com to find out more information about slab engineering.